Let's start with a second. A second is the time it takes for this, not specifically, but every time this letter flashes is one second. A second used to be defined as one eighty-six thousand four hundred three day, but nowadays it's defined as the time it takes one cesium atom to go through an up-down cycle nine billion one hundred ninety-two million six hundred thirty-one thousand seven hundred seventy times. Sixty seconds make a minute. Sixty minutes make an hour, and approximately twenty-four hours make a day. A day is defined as the time it takes for the Earth to make one rotation on its axis. This is not exactly 24 hours, it's actually 23 hours, 54 minutes, and 4.1 seconds. Though, because of the time it takes for the, relativi the relativistic effects of the sun setting to reach us, it's exactly 24 hours. Over the past several billion years, the Earth's rotation has been gradually slowed by the gravitational tug of the moon pulling against it. So. By the way, a nanosecond is one billionth of a second. A microsecond is one millionth of a second. A millisecond is one one thousandth of a second. A femtosecond is one trillionth of a second. A picosecond is one quadrillionth of a second. An attosecond is one quintillionth of a second. A zetasecond is one septillionth of a second. And a yoctosecond is one sextillionth of a second. Of course, the octosecond isn't our smallest unit of time. Our smallest unit of time is the Planck time, which is the smallest time possible. It's defined as the time it takes light, the fastest thing in the universe, to travel one Planck length. This time is 10 to the minus 44th of a second. How we keep track of the time of day is that the day of a particular time zone starts when that time zone is facing exactly 180 degrees away from the sun. This is considered 12 o'clock p.m. or midnight. After a minute, it becomes 12.01, then 12.02, then 12.03, and so on. This continues until 12.59 because remember, there are 60 minutes in an hour. After that, it goes to 1 o'clock. This is considered 1 o'clock a.m. It then goes 101, 102, 103, etc. until 159 when it becomes 2 o'clock, then 3 o'clock, then 4 o'clock, then 5 o'clock, then 6 o'clock, then 7 o'clock, then 8 o'clock, then 9 o'clock, then 10 o'clock, then 11 o'clock, then 12 o'clock a.m., which is noon. It's when a particular time zone is facing almost directly at the sun. After that, it goes to 1259, then starts over with 1 o'clock, which is the new p.m., then 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, which then keeps going until midnight, completing the 24-hour cycle. Technically, this does mean that every single individual point longitude has its own unique time. So, for example, that sink would have a time a few milliseconds ahead of that shower. This would, however, make traveling very annoying and complicated. What we do instead is that we divide the Earth into 24, representing the 24 hours of the day, approximately equal areas called time zones. Each of these time zones have their own hour. So for example, in one time zone it could be 627, but the next one due east it would be 727. That is basically the one thing we humans do to simplify time. And we even mess around with that. All too often we stretch and extend the time zone's natural limits to fit the borders of different countries. But anyway, for us, every seven days makes a week. We have seven days. It starts with Sunday, then Monday, then Tuesday, then Wednesday, then Thursday, then Friday, then Saturday. Then starts over. Because seven is such a non-metric number, this makes it very hard for someone to name a random date in history and be able to tell what day of the week it was. So anyway, there are about 365.25 days in every year. 
A year is defined as the time it takes the Earth to orbit once around the Sun. 24 divided by 4 equals 6. So does that mean that after the 365th day of every year, we just celebrate a six-hour day? No. That would basically mess up everything. What we do instead is that over the course of four years, we let these six hours accumulate into 24 hours. So every four years, we s instead of celebrating a year with 365 days, we celebrate one with 366 days. We add an extra day representing the 24 hours we've lost. That used to be all we did for calendar accuracy. However, that does assume that a year is exactly 365 days and 6 hours. It's actually 365 days, 5 hours, 48 minutes, 45 seconds, 993 milliseconds, and 600 nanoseconds. Or 365.242199 days. The inaccuracy of about 11 minutes may not seem like much, but over the course of 128 years, it can accumulate into one day. After 1,600 years of this growing inaccuracy, we finally found a way eventually to make up for this error. Our system is that every 100 years, we skip a leap year. For example, the years 1900, 1800, and 1700 were not leap years. But even this isn't quite accurate. So what we do is that every 400 years, we do have a leap year. So for example, the years 1600 and 2000, which would regularly not be leap years, are leap years. Not even this is exactly perfect. It's only accurate to within about one day every 8,000 years. However, we've been using this calendar for less than 450 years, so it's close enough for now. 1600, 1900. What? Well, currently, the average life expectancy of a human is 66 years. It varies from place to place. So we easily see years pass by within our own lifetime. So when dating historical events, we use a system of counting the number of years since a year one. What was significant about this year one? Well, it's supposedly the time at which Jesus Christ, a notable figure in our history, was born. He was probably actually born three or four years before that, but that doesn't matter. So, if we say something happened in the year 400, that means that it happened 399 years after this year 1, because 400 minus 1 is 399. However, after about 1,000 years after this year 1, we start becoming lazy. I mean, for example, we don't want to say something happened in 1,492, we just shorten it to 1492. We don't say something happened in 1944, we say it happened in 1944. Currently, at the time of this video's making, it is the year 2013. Shouldn't we call it 2013? Well, after 2000, it kind of varies. Some people say 2013 and others say 2013. For this particular year one, we go in reverse. So one year before year one is year one BCE. 400 years before year 1 is 400 BCE. Of course, for it to work this way, there was no year 0. It just went from 1 BCE to 1. Years that happened in 1 and onwards are considered to be in the year CE, Common Era. Years that happened before 1 are considered to be BCE, Before Common Era. These can be used interchangeably with the terms AD and BC. BC refers to things that happened before year one, and AD refers to things that happened year one onward. However, the terms BC and AD refer to certain life events within Jesus's lifetime. But Jesus was a religious figure and is only of major importance to one religion, Christianity. We therefore use the terms BCE and CE to maintain religious neutrality.